Thank you, Dr. Gabon. All right, thank you all so much for joining. Okay, so we're going to be uh, starting right away. You're welcome, Mr. Joachim. Good afternoon. And also, Mrs. Cecilia, you're welcome. Thank you. All right. So um, I'm just going to quickly say that if you're logged in with your device name, I can see someone who has Zoom user. Please kindly rename your device so that we can identify you. We can know who you are. We can call you um, by your name in case you have a question. And um, please do not unmute yourself. Once you log in, please keep your mic muted and do not unmute unless you are asked to. Thank you all so much once again for joining. I'm going to hand over to Ms. Cecilia. You're welcome. All right, thank you, sir. Um, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our Business School Nigeria Business Leadership Development Program. Uh, today's theme is combining to traditional and agile approaches in hybrid projects. My name is Cecilia Adamu John. I'm a humanitarian worker with the United Nations. And it's my pleasure to moderate today's event. Uh, today's event brings top personalities from prestigious industries and the arts to Rome Business School so that our community can hear and learn from. So I'm excited to be in today's program. Uh, today, we have a special guest, uh, Mr. Joachim Adiponle. He will be speaking uh, to us on the topic combining traditional and agile approaches in hybrid projects. Uh, Mr. Joachim Adiponle is a natural and a hands-on leader with outstanding ability to develop and lead top performing teams towards the achievement of set goals and objectives. He is an effective relationship builder with expertise in establishing strategic partnerships with key stakeholders to guarantee efficient coordination of internal controls and processes with a dynamic career spanning over 20 years in the finance and banking industry. Coupled with a passion for driving innovation and operational excellence, he brings a wealth of expertise and accomplishment to any table. During his tenure as Chief of Operating Officer at Standard Chartered Bank, he achieved remarkable success in enhancing client onboarding experiences, implementing robust financial controls, and streamlining operations. By leveraging his extensive knowledge of the financial market and adopting fair trade practices, he consistently improved profitability and mitigated risks. His expertise in digital product development, business analysis, and stakeholder management has been pivotal in achieving organizational goals and ensuring compliance with regulatory requirements. His previous role cutting across business analysis, project and change management. He spearheaded transformational initiatives resulting in substantial, substantial productivity gains, expanded cost consumer access to digital services and increased revenue. As the CEO and co-founder at SANA, uh, he has spearheaded the launch and growth of a digital remittance and payment platform in Canada with operations extending into the United Kingdom and the United States of America. His role has encompassed diverse responsibilities from business development and financial management to operational leadership and research. His commitment to continuous learning is reflected in his educational background and professional certifications, holding an MBA from the University of Lagos and a bachelor's degree in economics. He has cultivated a strong foundation in business management and strategic decision making. His certification as a project management professional Certified Business Analysis Professional from International Institute of Business Analysis, that's IIBA, um, ITIL Foundation Continued Professional Development, CPD from Axelos, Change Management Practitioner from Prosky, and Business Analysis from University of Toronto, uh, School of Continuing Studies, um, Data Analysis from Brain Station, Toronto. As distinguished, um, this has distinguished him as a management practitioner. Um, okay, also, you see, uh, I'd like to highlight his expertise in leading complex initiatives and driving organizational change outside of his professional pursuits. He actively engages in consulting services to support small businesses 
in developing effective strategies and improving the operational efficiency and digital customer experience. He is excited to bring his vast industry knowledge, leadership acumen and strategic mindset to contribute to new opportunities and help organizations thrive in a rapidly evolving business landscape. Uh, so now I would be calling on uh, Mr. George Mudipule uh, to just uh, go ahead and speak on the um, topic for today. You're welcome, Mr. George. Good to have you here. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thanks, Cecilia, for that um, introduction. It was quite a, a lengthy. I had an abridged uh, form of introducing myself, but I think you decided to go the whole hog, which is good. But um, once again, I'm happy to be here. Uh, good afternoon to you guys over there, but it's, uh, it's morning over here. It's just a, bit, a little over 10 a.m. here in Canada, and it's, um, it's snowing outside. I know it's hot over there, but that, I guess that is um, the reality we face in today's modern world of a global village. I'm happy to be joining you today to discuss uh, this topic, uh, which uh, um, is combining traditional and agile project management approach, you know, the hybrid, how we came about that, what are the benefits and, and um, other points which we'll be delving into in the course of, of the presentation. So I will start with uh, sharing my slide. Uh, let me know if uh, you can see it, if it's okay. Can you see my screen? Can you let me know if you can see my screen, please? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can see your screen and uh, there are comments in the chat box that indicate that. Um, okay, yeah, so. yeah. So because actually it's difficult for me, I can't be look, looking at my screen, looking at the chat okay. and it might be quite difficult. So please, in case there's anything in the chat message, Cecilia, I will appreciate if you can bring that to my attention. Okay. No so uh, thank you. I am I'm, I'm here today to talk about um, how we bring the two approaches uh, in project management, which is a traditional approach and the agile approach into enhancing a project success. So a little um, about myself, I think um, most of the introduction has already been done, right? So I currently am the CEO and co-founder of SANA. Um, it, it, we focus more on digital remittance, but essentially we cover more on the entire FinTech space. And um, some of my academic qualifications has also been um, highlighted, but I think in addition, um, some of the things that I also do is I consult on project and change management. And I also, um, um, I, I lecture, I'm an instructor uh, in one of the colleges here in Ontario, um, where I, I teach um, project management and strategic change management and leadership transformation. Um, so today, what um, our agenda, these are, we'll be looking at um, some of, I can see a hand, somebody's hands at the top, I don't know if, but I'll just put that on the side. Maybe I'll take questions later. So today we'll be looking at, um, we, we intend to cover these topics. Um, we'll be introducing ourselves to the hybrid project management. We'll look at comparison between the traditional and agile methodologies. And uh, we'll perhaps try to establish a case for hybridization as, as it's called, right? Which is a combination of both approaches. Um, we look at how you design a hybrid project management framework uh, in your place of uh, work. And once you design, how do you implement it? Then, you know, project management is all about tools and techniques. So we look at some of the tools and techniques in hybrid project management. Then perhaps maybe narrow down, look into um, some case studies and see what lessons we can learn from, from that. Then we'll perhaps take, uh, take some interactive questions. So introduction, when we say hybrid project management, what do we mean, right? So uh, before now, 
Uh, what we used to have was what we call the traditional approach to project management, which some of you might be familiar with already. Um, it's called the waterfall approach. Um, and this, you know, was a bit, um, uh, has been our project has been executed um, before now. It um, it's looks at, uh, when you look at the concept of the WBS, the work breakdown structure, whereby you decompose your projects uh, over time and you implement them over a particular life cycle where of, uh, you know, initiation, um, planning, execution, monitoring and control and closing. So all projects follow that particular uh, pattern and it's like a waterfall. So you... Um, start your project, uh, for example, if you are looking at construction as an example, um, you start with the foundation. If you, are, if you are planning, you draw your plan, your design. Then from there, you go to the foundation. The foundation, you put erect the structure. From the erect the structure, you put the roofing, the fittings, uh, and then all the other uh, nice to have. Then before you commission. So in essence, it follows a particular pattern. You know, that's why they call it a waterfall, right? But over time, with um, beginning of uh, in the mid uh, 20th century, around 1950, we begin to have things that has to like formal, formalization of traditional project management. We had the Gantt chart was introduced in the 1950s and the critical path method, the CPM was also introduced then. You know, when you look at the network diagram, it uh, believes that um, each activity in a project has the uh, successor activities and uh, predecessor activities. So it's like uh, technical sequencing of project execution and until one is done, you cannot start the other and it goes on and on. But um, when we moved into the 90s, when the computer age began to develop and the tech boom crystallized, uh, we, they found out that the traditional approach was not um, adequate in meeting the evolving need particularly in software development, whereby you need to speak to market. You know, then if you remember during the um, tech boom, speed to market was one of the key um, competitive advantage you need to have. So the whole idea of um, Agile was introduced. The Agile manifest Manifesto came up in the 1990s. And you'll see in that instance, what most people do, which Agile advocates, is to come up with um, a, a stereotype, a, uh, a prototype rather, a prototype of your product, um, push it into the market. And that prototype is what we call the MVP, the minimum viable proposition of your product. You put it into the market. And as you receive feedback from your stakeholders, which could be the users or your sponsor or whoever the multiple stakeholders you might have, you begin to iterate and improve upon the product over time. So you are looking at different sprints in improving that product. So that is what Agile is about as against the usual traditional. So, but when we move into the millennium, right, um, 2000s till today, uh, people notice the increasing complexities in, in, in handling, um, integrating both methodologies because there are, there are times where there are some projects that is a need for you to be agile, but also you still need to follow the traditional um, sequencing of a normal project life cycle. So the case for hybrid was more established in 2000. So, and like I said, hybrid is a strategic approach that balances the rigors, you know, uh, and planning of the traditional method with the iterative response nature of agile practice. So there is a mix uh, of, of those two, you know. So if you look at some of these, you know, traditional approach relies a whole lot on planning upfront. Yeah, you have a lot of upfront planning. You have a linear process which has to be followed. There's a strict control mechanism in traditional. But, you know, with um, agile manifestos, there is a need for, you know, the complexity and dynamics of the environment in which you operate often requires a more flexible approach to project execution. So, and the blending of the two is what um, led to the hybrid. So if you try and look at a comparison between the 
uh, traditional method and the agile method, which I've said, some of them, they have their strengths and limitations. So for the traditional or well, waterfall, you know, some of the strengths I identify was, you know, upfront, you know what you are doing. It's clear, it has a fixed structure. There's a whole lot of emphasis on documentation, right? So, you know, the roles and responsibilities are clearly laid out. And the planning and execution process is highly predictable in a traditional traditional um, approach, but it has its limitation. Some of the limitations that can be quite re rigid and slow to react to changes. So in case you have any new information or any, maybe you're trying to re re respond to competitive advantage, it is slow for you to change when you have a, a traditional approach about everything from beginning to end is already laid out. So the ability for you to react mid project, mid stream, it's, um, it's almost impossible with, uh, with, um, with the traditional approach. So, and there's always the risk that the final product might not meet current needs due to the length of the project cycle. So if you take some of the construction um, projects, big construction projects, which are executed, some of them, the, the length of time it takes in executing there might even be new technologies that would have evolved. And by the time you're, you're commissioning your products, your project, you find out that oh, some of the features that are there are no longer modern and things have changed. So that's the downsides of the traditional uh, approach. But when you look on the right, you look at the agile methodology, you know, it thrives on its flexibility and its customer-centric approach. So the focus is on the customer, the iterate, and based on the feedback from the customer, this is introduced back into the project execution and the product and the minimum viable proposition is enhanced upon. So it encourages continuous feedback and improvement with high collaborative team environment. So in Agile, the collaboration is top notch. You know, everybody brings in their feedback and all this feedback is pulled together and it is seen to see how we can make this project uh, more, more, um, collaborative. But despite this, the strength of Agile, I want to say that there are some uh, challenges. One of them is, you know, there is a struggle because there's usually less documentation, right? So I might not be the best fit for projects that have tight budgets or in industries with very high regulation because in those industries where we have very high regulation and you use Agile approach, you could run into trouble because if something goes wrong, look at, for example, look at the current crisis that Boeing is having with their, uh, with their, with their aircraft and the, um, the FAA in, in the United States. So once your project has been investigated in a highly regulated environment, the only thing the investigators will be looking out for is the level of documentation of each of the processes, your quality assurance check, your um, testing, your safety checks and everything. So if you don't have adequate documentation, that could be a problem. And that's always a problem with Haja. Okay, so, you know, so this comparison, when you look at the two on the left and on the right, the strengths and the limitation, you see what are the pros and the cons of each approach. So the hybrid method is a way whereby you try to get the best of both sides and you integrate it together. And when you have that integration, you know, um, it makes it effective in, in the way some of your projects are, are rendered. So if you look at some of the reasons why you need to go into hybrid approach is the need to balance the structure with agility, which I've already explained. You need to be agile. You need to be able to quick to respond to change um, how things are, are impacting in the market. So you might be on the one path today, but with new information that are coming, you need to be able to respond. Taking that information, reflect on it and respond. And if you need to change course with Agile, you'll be able to change course. But when you introduce both into a traditional project approach and, and you have a hybrid situation, you know, it, it brings agility into the project. The other issue there is the diverse stakeholders requirements, you know, which has a challenge with, you know, predictability and flexibility. So diverse stakeholders, we have diverse inputs and some of these demands are changed. 
say for example, if you are embarking a project that has a maybe your your target market, your okay, is for example the Lagos market. The Lagos market is a very large market, and you are developing a product targeted at the Lagos uh, market. And in the process, if you are using agile midstream, certain information might trick in that oh, this thing will be acceptable more if we trick it this way. So the ability to take in that um, um, requirement and introduce it into your product in the product is one of the reasons why people are making a case that even for projects that cannot be executed wholly on agile, which is usually the preferred approach. Um, if you are going traditional, you should have a way whereby you should be able to bring some of those discipline of agile into your traditional approach. And that's one of the cases for um, hybridization. Another reason is risk management. You know, So you need to combine planning with iterative review. Iterative review is the ability for you to do a check-in at every point in time. You pause and you review based on what we have done is there anything we have done better? Is there anything we could do better? And based on those feedback, you introduce it into the process again and you go to the next step. So those are sprints using the agile methodology. So that way, any risk that is identified early in a project could be corrected before the completion of that project. So lastly, Another case is the leverage and strengths that you know which you can have because you are combining two good methodologies and you are leveraging on them, you know, to bring to improve your project delivery. So that leverage is actually very, very helpful. So if you look at some of the benefits of combining these methodologies, right? Um, like I said, increase adaptation to changing project scopes, that makes you response, your rate of response is. I have, your client's satisfaction will be top notch because you are inter in, uh, you are periodically engaging them and taking their feedback and putting that into your project uh, execution and the outcome. Your team productivity will be high because using the agile sprint with traditional framework, the your team is engaged fully. Okay, so team productivity is high. And there is more efficient, um, more efficient resource management with agile flexibility uh, than traditional planning. So, you know, with traditional planning, if you look at some of our projects, especially the government projects executed, um, I want to use Nigeria as an example. Most of the projects executed are used using traditional approach. You find out that along the way, understand a whole lot of resources would have been expended. I will use a good example, take Tinapa. Um, in Calabar, right, that resort. Um, that project was, was delivered using the traditional approach. And along the way, some of the challenges the, the, the entity is having today, some of those feedbacks were perhaps highlighted during the project execution. But the question was, how responsive were they in taking those information and reflecting on it? I know there was a time also in Ajakuta when Ajakuta steel mill was being constructed, right? In, in the maybe mid 20th century, if I'm not wrong, I think it was during the Basajos re regime as a military president, that was when we, we had Ajakuta. Ajakuta was constructed without identifying that the resource which will be needed to power Ajakuta, which is uranium, right? was put into consideration. And that's why Jakuta is still stuck in limbo till today, several decades after. So the need to combine these two approaches up in providing you know, the benefits of agile with traditional can only um, provide a more efficient and reliable outcome. So like I said, greater, greater product relevance as delivery by iterative adapting to market changes. So as the market is changing, you are quick to respond as a project or as an organization. So when you look at these two, the key components of the hybrid, like I said, traditional as of upfront planning, you plan upfront and you define the project scope. So the scope is very clear. From the beginning, you plan, then you begin to execute. So you have milestone-based project tracking 
um, everything is based on milestone. So we move phase one, phase two, phase three. You know, there are phase gate review for quality control. If you look at Lagos, the Battle Expressway, that's an example of a project being executed using traditional um, approach to project management. And they said, okay, every at every phase, so from Lagos to Ore, we'll pause, we'll review and see the quality control. Then if it is okay, from where uh, uh, more we, we keep going, I'm, I'm talking of Lagos, but Lagos to Shagamu, then from Shagamu, we'll proceed to, to the next place, right? So there is also strong emphasis on documentation and record keeping. I think I already mentioned that. If you look at Agile, you know, iterative development with Sprint, I've already highlighted that, that the Sprint is one of the key um, advantages that um, Agile brings to project management. You know, there is daily standup meeting for team alignment. So in Agile, you meet every day, even if it's just for 15, 30 minutes. You gather your team together. You said, okay, what did we do yesterday? What could we have done better? What are the lessons learned? And based on that feedback, you introduce those into, into your work for the day. So that team stand-up meeting means that the entire team is aligned. Everybody is on the same page. Everybody is working towards uh, the same purpose. There's cost, continuous customer feedback and product backlog refinement. Product backlog is, so what we call a product backlog in, 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 uh, uh, in product development is, you know, when you have an idea of all the things you want to be included in your product, right, based on the requirements you have gathered, you could have almost 50 or 100 requirements which you have gathered, right, as part of your product. Now, the issue there is that when you engage with the customer from time to time, you are able to prioritize that, okay, for the next sprint, which is in the next two weeks, of this 50 or 100, which do we focus on, right? So it allows the project team to be able to focus and target on the high priority based on the feedback from the customer, and you begin to focus on this one. So there's a whole lot of prioritization um, in, in that, and that's what is referred to by the backlog, uh, product backlog refinements. No, and also lastly, adaptive planning and change responsiveness. So you are very adaptive and when there is a change, you will respond quickly. But when you look at the intersection of the two approaches, when you look at the intersection of the two approaches, you see how you know, the, the components can be effectively combined. Risk management is an area where both approaches contribute to create a dynamic response strategy you know, in risk management. So when you combine both, you know, you see that uh, re reflected in how well you are able to manage risk. Customer feedback is another area where agile responsiveness enhances traditional customer engagement efforts. So when you use agile approach with traditional, you know, it, it helps, in, you know, in driving that customer feedback and, and, and engagement. So, you know, when you have an hybrid, approach to your project management, okay? It creates a kind of, um, uh, what, what I would call, you know, a kind of a balance, you know, a balanced, robust project management approach that allows for detailed planning while still accommodate, accommodating the need for agility and adjustment as the project unfolds. So I think in summary, that is the key reason why the hybrid approach is a better and more preferred approach in project management today, the ability to you know, maintain that balance between um, the two, two um, traditional and agile approaches. So now when we look at this, now then the question is, how do you build an agile framework, a, a hybrid framework rather, you know, within your organization. So we say that there are certain steps you need to look at. So I put together these eight steps that you can look at in, in, in building, um, in designing a, you know, a framework, because you need to have a framework which you need to adopt and implement within your organization. So on step one, you need to assess the project needs and the context. So in this instance, you need to know what are your project goals. The project goals, the complexity, the regulatory requirements and the stakeholder expectation will determine whether this qualifies for a hybrid approach or you stick 
to traditional or you stick to agile. So for example, if you have a customer project, maybe a product launch is what you are working on and speed to market is one of the key justification in pushing that project ahead, then you might want to stick totally 100% to agile project uh, um, approach. If you are doing a project, maybe for a government agency like there, for example, the, the example I gave with Boeing, right? It might be better for you to stick to traditional, right? But if you have a sweet spot in the middle, then hybrid approach might be the best to, to do. So once you have assessed the project need and context, you have signed that the next thing you do is to select your methodology elements. You know, you have to pick, okay, which components do I want? Is it more leaning towards traditional, 70% traditional, 30% agile, or 80% agile, 20% traditional? So you need to design the mix of the, of the methodologies, how you want to add it. Once that has been done, you need to design a process flow. So designing the process flow creates like kind of a map, you know, of what elements needs to work together from initiation of a project to your project closure. Once this has been done, on step four, you create your documentation and your artifacts. So the documentation and artifacts, you know, are templates and documents that will support your process. Why you need to document this is for consistency, right? Uh, by creating um, uh, enterprise resources, because you might have similar projects in the future that you need to replicate. So you need to revert to those documentation. After this has been done on step five, you need to look at your tooling and your infrastructure. Okay, so you need to choose a particular project management tool that will be able to support both. Not all softwares are designed in a way to be agile. And some are traditional um, um, design. They are designed in a way to manage traditional projects. So if you buy, for example, a project, a construction software, project management software, it's most likely that the way and structure the, the, the software will be designed will be mostly traditional. But when you're using applications or tools like Jira, which is used for software, mostly using software development, you notice that it has more tendencies to um, support Agile. Now, once you have done this, you need to train your, train your team on how to understand both approaches and how to integrate them. So you need to provide training and resources to help them. Then you need to start with a pilot. You pilot it based on your understanding, the feedback, you begin to refine over time. And once you have done that, you roll it out across your organization and you continue with continuous improvements will always be there. You don't um, take out that. So like I said, this is how the model um, framework works when you have a combination of the traditional and agile. So it's usually called the, the water scrum four. So instead of just saying water four and scrum, they said water scrum four. And what this try to do is that waterfall is used as the initial requirements at the beginning of the project. In the middle of the project, scrum practice and guides and iterative development and testing phases is introduced to bring that agility into the project execution. Then at the end, final delivery, you revert back to the traditional. So that's kind of a balance. So it's like what, what I will call a sandwich situation, whereby you have waterfall on the boundary and in the core of your project approach, you have um, agile via, via Scrum. I don't know whether at this point, whether there are any questions. As as anybody, or I should, I can continue. Yeah, I okay. think you can continue. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll continue. So now let's look at once once you have designed your framework. The question is, how do you implement a uh, hybrid approach? Everybody knows that okay, the hybrid approach as it's it's sweet, is it nice to have? But for you to be able to implement, there are certain things you have to consider, which are cause some challenges, which you need to put into consideration. The first one is the cultural adaptation, adaptability, you know, um, organizational culture. So, and this is where my change management art comes on. Uh, the said culture, it's strategy for breakfast. So organizational culture is very important in how well your organization might be able to adapt to a particular 
uh, technique or approach you are bringing into the organization. So you need to ensure that your team and the culture are ready to adapt to the new ways of working. So you might need to go use a change management approach in introducing this into your organization. The other is what I call the methodological purity, you know, avoiding the tendency to stick to the comfort of traditional methods without embracing newer approach. So some people are comfortable with the status quo. You know, they might not want to, um, you know, change, say, okay, no, this has to be purely, because it's traditional, they understand all the way. They want it to be traditional or true. Any form of deviation introduces something different that is agile, they push it out. And you also see some people, especially those who have worked predominantly in the software development space, they are conditioned to agile and they want to think everything is agile, agile. So they want that purity. They don't want to do so. You have to be able to show that you manage that uh, tendency for methodological uh, purity. The other is resource allocation, you know, ability to manage resources between a structured and flexibility. Because when you look at project management and you look at scheduling, scheduling of resources, you know, it's something that you have to be pre-planned and you have to plan in ahead. You have to engage, you have to ensure availability of those resources. But with, you know, agile, and you know flexibility. How quickly can uh, you can those resources, or can you manipulate those resources in it towards achieving your goal? So your resource al allocation, flexibility as an organization, it's um it's also very important. Then the communication over it, you know, you know ability to maintain clear and effective communication is is um, is a key one. It's one of the advantages of agile in the sense that remember those daily stands of when you have those your daily uh, auto, we call it daily autos, right? Daily standoffs, you have talk to the team, you check in with them, what is going well, what is not going well, what could be done better. And you know, you look at so when you want to adopt this um, hybrid approach in your space, make sure that you start with um, um, training, right? You have to offer compressive training sessions to the team on both approaches, agile, and traditional so that they understand clearly, then they can now um, understand why you are um, marrying the two. The next uh, best practice is to have increased um, adoption. So don't do a big bang of changing your methodology. You understand? It has to be increased adoption. So you introduce it in bits, let them get familiar with it. And as you start on a small scale, you begin to scale up as, as they get more comfortable using it. Stakeholder buying-in is very important, you understand? You have to engage your stakeholders early to ensure that they support the approach you are bringing into it. Um, you don't want a situation whereby you, you are introducing this approach and you have a pushback from key stakeholders. That could be quite frustrating and it could lead to resistance within the organization and a lot of pushback. Continuous feedback loop is very important which is one of the key um, characteristics of Agile, the feedback loop has to be continuous, it has to be fluid, and it has to flow effectively for you to be able to, you know, so to improve the process. Like I've highlighted earlier, you need to document your processes. There is need to be a very clear documentation of what your hybrid process is so that there is no confusion like a flexible tooling, make sure you use the project management tool that has the flexibility to handle both traditional and agile um, approach. Then of course, like uh, process customization, you need to customize your project um, to ensure that that is, um, is well-documented. Um, like I said, I was going to look at some case studies and, and to see how the integration of both the traditional and agile has been able to serve this sector, you understand, of, of the, uh, this part of its particular industries uh, as it may be. So looking at the first one, we look at the tech startup, right? So how are they able to transit from, you know, I've always said tech startups and fintech software development, they are traditionally agile, but are they able to transit from Agile to hybrid, as in what advantage of traditional approach 
have they been able to leverage on, you know, while adopting the agile approach? So you see in the example, in the scenario I gave here, you know, um, the, the tech company might decide to do for a more structured approach to cross departmental projects, you know, you know, when you have projects that affect multiple departments, you know, by implementing a hybrid uh, model, incorporating what I for, for planning, you know, you need to be able to plan because you have multi-dependency. If it is a project you are executing only within your department, it might be okay. I said, okay, we're going to run this 100% agile. But the moment you have to rely on all that department to execute, then there is a need for proper planning. And when you are doing about proper planning in advance, you are having a bit of a traditional approach. So agile alone may not suffice as organization scale. So for small companies or startups, when you start up, you can use agile in a small in a startup or a small business. But as your business grow, um, agile might not alone might not suffice in managing that scale. You need to revert to some of the benefits of traditional, right? So you need clear upfront planning can complete uh, iterative development. So you also need to do that plan ahead. The second case which I want to highlight is looking at it from a, a, a marketing agency. You know, how do you have hybrid event planning? You know, event planning. You know, before now, event planning was strictly 100% traditional. But now, how do you introduce the agility of agile into event planning, traditional event planning? So, you know, so the, key, the scenario which I've highlighted here is a situation whereby they use the approach to manage large scale corporate events, you know. So we are looking at venue selection, contract signing, you know, will be done through traditional, but you use agile methodologies for marketing campaign. So marketing campaign, you push things out. You want, um, you are trying to market the event. Maybe I'm doing a promo. I want to do a show and I want to promote it. Okay, so I've used traditional to plan contract signing events, get the venue ready. But when I'm marketing, if I go on social media and I notice that, oh, things are not looking good, we're not getting the kind of uh, awareness or engagement we want for this event, using agile methodology, you, you, respond, you take that feedback, you respond, and you change your marketing strategy. So that is um, whereby you, know, you have the hybrid approach in a marketing agency uh, or a market uh, event planning situation. But like I've highlighted, the last one, the third one is a construction firm, which normally uses traditional or the waterfall approach. You know? But by integrating Scrum into, into that process, you can see that you know, architectural design can be waterfall, but dynamics on the on-site, once the construction has started, how well construction is going on-site, you can introduce um, agile approach. So those daily check-ins, those daily orders, integration on the construction site by the project team every day to know okay, what we did yesterday, this week, what are we doing, what are we going to deliver? So they might be able to in coordinating when you are um, amongst diverse team on, on site. That might be helpful. So um, I guess that is about it. Um, in, in summary, this brings us to the end of uh, my uh, presentation today, and I've been able to see that um, you, each of them have their benefits. In summary, each of them have their benefits, they have their strengths, they have their use cases based on the industry you are applying it to. But if you are able to find that sweet spot whereby you are able to integrate the two, you'll be able to take the benefits of both approach. And it's like they said, two, two ads are always better than one. So at this point, I want to pause and take questions um, if there are any. All right, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Joachim. Uh, from your elaborate presentations, we've clearly seen uh, the importance of the benefits of hybridization and uh, how it uh, facilitates um, adaptive management, especially towards uh, flexibility in terms of risk, uh, risk management, uh, customer feedback, and also uh, progress tracking and Thank you for the practical um, examples that uh, apply to our context uh, here and also the best practices. 
Um, I would just leave the floor open for questions at this point. You could leave your questions in the chat box or you could uh, raise your hands and indicate. I see that um, there are a lot of indications in the chat box requesting for the presentation, but I would leave admin to actually address um, this part of the comment. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, we have um, Olua Tusin. Her hand is off and she's also indicated in the chat box that she has a question. So uh, please, uh, you can go ahead and uh, ask your question. Olua Tusin. Good afternoon, Ma. Good Hello, afternoon. please, can you hear me? Yes, your audible, please ask your question. All right, Ma. Please, I just need to be sure. Is traditional methodology same as um, the waterfall? So, Mr. Joachim, yes. the question is addressed. Yes, because I saw somebody also ask um, a little more on how to match waterfall, scrum, and traditional approach. I want to clarify here that you have a traditional, otherwise called waterfall, right? And why do you call it that? You understand? Because, you know, if you look at a waterfall, you know, water cascades. From a higher level down to the next step to the next step so what that means is that you don't get to the next step without having dealt with the predecessor step so that's why the name came from waterfall waterfall is the same as traditional so in this instance now you are comparing scrum scrum is a methodology used in agile right so you have agile and you have traditional otherwise called um waterfall I don't know if that answers your question, Tosin. Okay, uh, Tosin, right. does it answer your question? Uh, please just indicate if this answers your question. Um, I would go to the chat box before moving to Olufemi Ojo. I see your hand is also up. Um, someone is asking what Scrum is. Um, would you kindly elaborate, Mr. Joachim? So that's why I said Scrum is the methodology used in Agile. That's right. It, it talks about, yeah, it talks about the iterative nature, right, of uh, project execution, whereby you have sprints. So I will give you an example, right? Um, okay, I don't know whether this might be the best. Um, let me give you a, a particular example. Let's assume I want to develop a phone, right, a phone. And I start with a prototype, Nokia 3310, and I with and I put it out there. Okay. Once it is out there, I give it to the user to use, right? I cannot tell my team that every two weeks we are going to gather for a check-in based on feedback from the users. So in two weeks' time, we gather together, take all the feedback, they say, oh, they want it to have a um, uh, touch touch capability, they want it to have Bluetooth capability and everything. So that's our backlog. Now from the backlog, we cannot say, okay, for the next two weeks, let us focus on the touch capability, uh, the network capability. We are going to drop um, some of this other uh, feedback till another sprint. So you can see you are doing it in sprints. In two weeks' time, you have included those other new. It is not better, right? It is not moving closer to an iPhone than it was when you first started with the MVP of a Nokia 3310. So they are the technique whereby you are using those sprints to improve the product which we've done in Agile is what it comes to from. Okay. Uh, Oluya Misi, I believe this answers your question. There are also uh, feedback in the chat box that you could reference to, but I think this is elaborate enough. Um, moving on, the admin, uh, I see the admin also has indicated to ask a question, I believe. So please, um, you could go ahead, admin, your hand is raised. Otherwise, I can see Moses Badebo still asking what is Agile. I believe that's what I just explained, that the tech methodology of starting with a prototype minimum viable proposition and improving iteratively, that is what is Agile, right? Yeah, like so using the Agile technique. Okay, uh, Moses, I believe this answers your question. Uh, moving on, so I'm alternating between the chat box and hands that are raised so that we can go at the same pace. Um, I see uh, Ojum, Ojum Kristen, uh, you can kindly unmute and ask your question.
Kristen, are you with us? Um, okay, the admin, uh, admin, please go ahead. Uh, I see admin host, there's no name, so please. Admin, you can go ahead and ask your question or provide your feedback. Um, I'm thinking that is me. Um, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Dupondi, for the fantastic presentation um, and then uh, facilitator thank Cecilia. Uh, the question that I, had, that I had was, do you have any specific tools in mind that has incorporated both the agile and the traditional methodology together? So, for example, do you have a tool that works uh, like Jira as well as like a Microsoft project kind of stuff. Is there any tool? Because I remember that we spoke about um, uh, adapt uh, adaptability of tools that would work for mm -hmm. hybridization. So are there mm -hmm. any ones that you know of? I think, I think most of the tools you have in the market today have actually been enhanced and updated Right. You know, you have all these new versions, version, versions. It's, so most of them are actually a combination of hybrid. Now, depending on which one you have more competencies with, I can tell you for a fact that MS Project um, is, very, is a very good hybrid tool. You're right. Jira 2 is also not bad, but um, I'm more familiar with MS Project. And I know with MS Project, you can have both the traditional um, waterfall approach implemented using the tool. And in case you now need to bring some flexibility, maybe reassign, I just give some feedback on your scheduling or cost. It has the capability for you to bring that agility also. So um, you already have your answers, you know, with those two you refer, but I'm sure there are so many others, Monday and, and the rest out there in the market. All right, uh, thank you, Mr. Jachim. Uh, just to also inform that the uh, attendance and survey is up in the chat box. I believe uh, we can all refer to that and do the needful. There's also a comment by um, Olusola, Olusola, an input rather to say Scrum is a framework used primarily in agile software development for managing product development. It emphasizes iterative and incremental progress with a focus on collaboration, flexibility, and delivery high value features. Also said, Scrum involves breaking down work into small manageable tasks, organizing them into short time frames called sprints, and regularly reviewing progress through ceremonies like sprint planning, daily stand-ups, uh, sprint reviews, and sprint uh, retrospectives. So that's an addition. And uh, in the meantime, do we still have questions uh, in the chat box? If you have any question and you don't want to put it in the chat box, just Raise your hand and indicate uh, priorities here seem to be the attendance link. And like I've mentioned, it's already on the chat box. So uh, you could kindly click on the link. Um, now I see uh, Kingsley, Kingsley's hand is up. Kindly go ahead on mute and ask your question. Nariwo Kingsley, please, if you're speaking, we can hear you. Okay. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, you're audible oh. now. Please go thank ahead. Thank you very ask. much. Yeah, um, thank good afternoon from Nigeria and Mr. Adekonle. Thank you so very much for the wonderful presentation. Um, I have this question concerning the uh, um, the hybrid um, methodology. Now, I look at my own strength. I'm more of a machine installer. Um, I install machines more than even in construction. So I'm trying to look at how I can marry um, these two together. Now, this is my concern. Um, before I make order for a machine, I will have done the URS, um, user requirement specification, the CRS, and the FRS. Now, at this point, it takes some time because I will sit with a whole lot of stakeholders. We agree on what and what we don't want. So at this point, I would have given CEO to the OEM, um, give them a go ahead to start building. 
because now there would be a contract to be between my procurement team and the OEM. So at this point, I cannot go there and say I want to tweak any longer. So how do I marry this um, hybrid into my own kind of project style? Yes, I understood the fact that during implementation, we can do the daily um, kickoff meeting, stand up meeting. What did we do well? What didn't we do well? Yes, I can always marry that, which I do. But in this area where I have a contract with the OEM, how do I tweak? Should there be any um, any need for an advancement? Thank you. Yeah, so thanks for that uh, beautiful question. And you know, like I it uh, stated earlier, the advocation here is not for everybody to go hybrid. We're just trying to highlight the benefits of having a hybrid approach. By the nature of certain job or industry, it has to be mostly traditionally um, 100% tradi um, traditional or water approach. However, if you look at in the case of um, the case study I gave earlier, events management. Events management is basically traditional because you need to plan, you need to get your vendors, you need to sign contracts, just like you have said. You need to do everything before and then you start executing, which is purely traditional. However, when it comes to the issue of commercials, marketing, right, they are now introducing Agile into it that based on feedback from the market, they are making some little additions where possible to the um, to the um, event. So let me take, for example, um, your your customer, uh, your OEM, your equipment, you have sent your order to the OEM, they're already manufacturing. Assuming based on when you introduce Agile a little into your, your process and your customer gives you feedback that, look, we don't like the packaging in which the equipment comes. Is it possible to change it from crate to carton or whatever, just for example? And you're able to reach out to your OEM and say, oh, I'm not changing the equipment, but however, when you are shipping it back to me, can we move it from crate to carton, blah, 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 or, you know, as the case might be. And, you know, so that's just a little introduction of that approach. And that's the thinking we want people to adopt, that you can actually have that feedback loop introduced and that agility introduced. Not that it will change the core of your, of your process as it is. But like I said, the advocate is not for everybody to go hybrid. You can actually stick to ag um, traditional based on your industry and um, agile as the case might be. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Debole. Um, I believe there's still more questions on the definitions for Scrum, but we've addressed that and I see that uh, we're short on time. So I'll just ask the next question that says, um, uh, can you explain how Agile is more time efficient than the traditional methodology? And maybe while you're responding, uh, you could align that with which methodology is best adopted for a project with short delivery time bound. So maybe you could just answer both. So I think the first question, I didn't really get that. Which one is more time efficient? Yes. No, so, so I... I, I, I yeah, it's by Chubik Stanley. Uh, can you explain so, how Agile is more time efficient than the traditional methodology? So I, I would say Agile is more time efficient than traditional, right? Because if you look at, if you look at your iron triangle, you understand your project um, constraints, triple constraints. You have your scope, you have your schedule, you have your time. Before you start a project, you have been given your schedule, the scope of delivery, what you need to do. Um, you've been given your time when you need to get it done and the board cost which you need to use to deliver it. So what we are discussing is, okay, in delivering that scope within the schedule that has been given, what approach do I do? Do I do a step-by-step -step phase from planning to executing to monitoring to closing or do i do it iteratively so for example you have been given a contract to develop a car i can be using traditional whereby i get gather designers together they design they do everything i buy materials i do everything and i cut putting it together and at the end of the day the time that i've been given i deliver a car or do i use an agile approach whereby within the first few weeks within the project 
I put something together, like a contraption with wheels. I show it to the customer. The customer said, I like this, but I want it to have this. And I take it back another two weeks. I introduce those feedback from the customer. I show him again. And I keep doing this in sprints all through the timeline I've been given. By the end of the day, when I get to the end of the project, the timeline I've been given for the project, the car is also available, just as that's been delivered with the traditional. But the question is, which one is the customer more happy with? If you make a mistake in traditional, you find out at the end of the project. If you make mistakes in Agile, because of the frequent checking, you're able to adapt. So that's where the agility comes in. So it's not as if one is more time effective than the other. It's just in the way and manner of approach in which the project is an execution. And for the person who said in short-term projects or with limited time, which one is better traditional or, or, um, or, or agile, agile yeah. I, I would say that um, for short-term projects, the question is how frequently will you have within that short time to be engaging with your customers for feedback? So if you don't have much time to be doing that and there's no flexibility, then you cannot use agile. You might have to go through the normal traditional, even if it's just to execute within a week, right? But if you have the ability to see your customer daily, then you can say, okay, let me do this thing using Agile. So the, the questions are neither here or not there. It depends on how you want to take advantage of both sides, the sweet spots of both sides and you combine it in your project execution. Okay. Um, uh, Ajim, the, the, Ajim's hand has been up for quite a while. So uh, you can go ahead and ask your question. We'll take uh, maybe two, three more and uh, then uh, we can move on. Ajim, can you unmute? If you cannot unmute, I think you can just drop your question in the chat box and maybe we can get to it. Uh, in the meantime, while um, Ujum Christian uh, tries to unmute, there's a question on, uh, in your experience, what are the frequent challenges to executing of a hybrid project management? And uh, someone is also asking, which one is best suited uh, for someone in the public health uh, development sector? Abu to Abraham, that is, which method? Yeah. So I think for the first question, I think I already alluded to that in my presentation. There's a slide I actually covered on that. Whether exactly. I'm talking about the organizational culture, in methodologies, and all those things. So exactly. I believe that question has been answered in the slide. Uh, for the yeah. person who says, okay, which one is best used in um, the public oh, yeah. sector? So like I said, it depends on the level of risk involved in the project you're executing. The higher the risk, the more tendency for you to be careful. You see, because Agile is kind of carefree. I won't call it carefree. It's it's a kind of, um, like I say, it's iterative. Less documentation, you are doing constant checking and you are changing things on the fly as you are going by. So for things that have high risk probability, like building a plane, right? That like mm -hmm. public health, we're talking about life there is need for you to have proper planning there is need for you to have proper documentation and if you see when you are looking at even just those two as an example then the answer based on what i've said today means i should be tending more towards traditional but if you want to look at a hybrid approach in public health you are trying to look at okay your um, um i'm just trying to use an example um your community um um, public health alert, health alert, alert system. How efficient will your health alert system be? You have to introduce Agile into that because you have to have that feedback loop to be able to engage when there is an outbreak and for you to be able to take that feedback in, react and respond accordingly. So you can see that I can deploy Agile towards my public health response section but when it comes to public health administration, I will use traditional. So combining both, you already have a hybrid. Okay, thank you, Mr. Jaji. Uh, and then I think this is the last one. Uh, you made mention of product uh, Hadlock. Can you please throw more light on that? This question is by Emmanuel Hadlock. Yeah, product backlog. Just like I said, if I want to develop a phone and I come to you guys now as my focus group and I say, what do you want in a phone? I can come out from that exercise with 
100 requirements from all of you. Now, if I have that 100 requirements and I put it on a list, that is my product backlog. backlog. Now, using agile methodology, I cannot say that, okay, I want to give you guys a prototype of the phone that you want to be using. So every two weeks, I'll be bringing an update to the prototype. So the question is, for these first two weeks, of the 100 requirements you have given me, what should we focus on for the first two weeks? We might be able to prioritize and come up with 10. So that means in the next two weeks, we are working only on 10 of the requirements of the 100. So in two weeks' time, when I bring the prototype back to you, you will be able to see the delivery, the futures of the top that has been prioritized. But I still have 90 left on my product backlog. So that is why it is called a backlog, right? It's a parking lot, whereby from time to time, you will move things out into production. So over time, as your project advances, the backlog will be inducing and the value proposition of your products will keep increasing. I hope that answers the question clearly. I, I believe so. Um, I, uh, we're running out of time, but I guess if there's still a pending inquiry to what you just answered, um, I believe the uh, admin would facilitate that. However, if it's well explained, the person asked for project hardlock. So for the fact that you clarify that it's backlog, I think it's um it's it's a so significant. No, at this point, um, uh, thank you very very much. Um, we have actually run out of time, or maybe not run out of time, but um, uh, the allotted time given to us. So any final words from you, Mr. Joachim, uh, before we proceed? Yeah, I think uh, the, I can just say you've been a beautiful audience. I can see the participation is, well, almost 300 on the call. So that's quite impressive. So I've, I've seen a lot of requests asking for the that's materials. Fine. I will try and share get that with uh, with Chair Macab so that you can make it available for you guys. But like I said, if you want, you can actually, um, if you have any more questions, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. You can check me out on LinkedIn and I will be able to, happy to ask, ask your questions. Okay, so for my contact on LinkedIn, just use my name, right? And just search on LinkedIn. I think I'm the only one bearing that name on LinkedIn. Okay, uh, that's good. Uh, informative enough. So for everyone you just heard, if you want to contact uh, Mr. George Imadipunle, you search the name on LinkedIn and uh, you would uh, find it. Thank you very much. I believe this is one of the most sought after uh, subjects and we got this um, using this platform and the, this opportunity. So many thanks to you, Mr. Joachim. Um, I would be uh, calling on um, Ido Ade uh, to speak on the Rome Business School Value uh, proposition. But once again, thank you so very much, Mr. Depunle, for uh, honoring this uh, invitation. Thank you. Thank you Over very much. Over to you, Mr. Ido. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Idowa Adeleke. A special appreciation to um, Cecilia Adamu for moderating the section today. And then also start to you, uh, Mr. Adepondi. It's been a wonderful time. It's been a very impactful um, section. So I'm here to speak briefly about Rome Business School and to also encourage um, prospects that could possibly be on this call. Um, so first, um, Rome Business School is, uh, is an international business school, the main campus in Rome, Italy, a satellite campus in Nigeria here. And then it's a school that offers up to 16 master's programs, and we also offer DBA programs. That's the Doctorate of Business Administration. So wrapping up with the recruitment process for the April 2024 intake, um, as um, the program officially starts on the 6th of April, with the orientation, which I believe the students are already aware of. So if you're a prospect and you're on this section, this is just a tip of the iceberg. You're going to be having a more insightful classes when you come on board. So um, you need to reach out to your admission advisor um, to get further details on how you can take advantage and join this intake. Keep in mind, if you're a prospect, the fees for the next intake is quite different from what it is now. So this is the best time for you to come on board. And um, also, 
admission process closes on the 28th of this month. That's next week, Thursday. So if you're coming on board, you are between now and the 28th to finalize all of your process with your admission advisor. So it's been a very wonderful time. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the audience. Do have a pleasant evening. Over to you. All right, thank you, Mr. Ido. I believe um, it's over to Sarah for the closing remarks. All right, um, good afternoon all. Thank you. Thank you, Cecilia. Um, Sarah is currently in a meeting. So we'd just like to thank you for joining and Mr. Joaquin, thank you so much for actually accepting our invitation and joining this meeting today. And for our students, I would like to advise, let us try and fill, fill out the survey that we sent out on the chat box. So it will actually help us to share the slides and recording as most of you has been requesting. So just fill the survey with your correct email and phone number so we can actually share the, um, the, the slides and the recording via the email for you. And also Mr. Joachim is also on LinkedIn. You can reach out to him via his LinkedIn handle, Joachim Adekwonli. And also Cecilia is also on LinkedIn as um, Cecilia Adamu. So you can also reach out to her and connect with them on LinkedIn as well. And thank you for joining. Also have a nice day. Bye.